Hi, let's say you've got a little uh, toy train set up like this and you want to actually count the number of laps that go around like this. Now I've actually uh, stuck a little magnet on the side of there and I've got one of these uh, magnetic uh, reed switches here that you can uh, that you use for your home burger alarms or whatever, any type of magnetic reed switch. So when it goes past, it closes the contacts in there, shorts it out, it's just a switch and you need to count how many laps? How do you do it? Well, you can do it the complex way which I've shown in my uh, previous video using a universal counter and all that uh, sort of jazz to do that, but I thought it'd be much more interesting to hack a calculator to do it. Now let's take a look at this uh, Casio SL300NC, but it should work with any uh, calculator. If you just go one plus like this and then press plus again, it'll be in the constant mode and then you just press equals like that every time and bingo you've got yourself a counter. So all we've got to do in theory is hook the output of our switch here across the equals key inside here and bingo we should have ourselves a nice little train lap counter. Let's give it a go. Quick tear down inside this. This is a dual uh, solar and battery uh, powered system, hence the little uh, diodes in here. <laughs> they didn't bother with uh, surface mount, they just used a through hole and solder them directly onto the board. That's really interesting. Uh, another interesting thing to note in here is this uh, lead here. They've got, <laughs> why they've got a lead in there? I think what they're doing there is actually clamping the output using it as a uh, like a 1.8 volt or whatever uh, diode clamp to clamp the output voltage from the solar cell here. So that's interesting, but uh, there's nothing else in here. We've just got the main IC chip on board. It's just been blobbed and somewhat annoyingly and not really ideal for the purpose. This uh, model has uh, the carbon uh, covered uh, copper pads here. So uh, these are uh, vias here and individual little test points there. Very nice all the way around there, but yeah, they're covered in carbon. So you have to scrape those off to be able to solder um, to these uh, pads and vias. And this one's a little bit annoying. Doesn't have screws holding it down. It's got these PCB uh, heat stakes here, but you can actually just get a knife in there and uh, shear those off. But yeah, this is not the best calculator for this job. Hmm. Now with this, what you're better off doing, instead of like removing the key like that, you're better off just finding which tracks actually connect under there, because these are carbon, so you know, to try and solder onto those, that's the equals key there, try and solder onto that, have the wires coming out front, not the best option, probably better to, and of course you can still keep the equals uh, key intact, if you can find the two appropriate matrix uh, traces that come out, and access them on the bottom side and then uh, uh, scrape off some of the carbon on there and then solder wires directly onto the uh, pads if you can. So in this particular case that's our equals key, there we go. That goes down to a via down there and that one goes down to a via. So those two vias, we can access those on the other side. Thank you very much. Now fortunately we've got two pads here connected to the two vias that we want. Isn't that convenient? These are all uh, test pads so that they can test this with a bed of nails uh, tester. So we can just scrape the carbon off those pads, just get in there with a knife, be very careful and you can expose, check it out, you can expose the copper under there and we should be able to solder to that pad very nicely, but the problem with soldering to pads instead of putting wires down vias is that it's not very robust. So you definitely want to use uh, low mass wires soldered onto those uh, so that they don't, when they flap around in the breeze, the weight doesn't uh, peel off the pad. You want to use a very low temperature on your iron, as low a temperature as you can get away with so you don't lift the pads. And uh, also you want to anchor down the wires later. So I'll just do that, scrape them off and solder it on. And Bob's your uncle. So there we go, I've modified that, just tacked on a couple of mod wires here. I've got it going off to a connector here, because as I said, if you've got a lot of strain on these wires, I mean, you can just take them directly off to whatever uh, switch you've actually uh, got, but that, don't forget to tape them down, otherwise there'll be stress on these solder joints, and they will just fall off the first time that you handle it'll Just peel the trace off, and uh, the pad off the um, fiberglass, and yeah, it'll really ruin your day. So better to have some sort of connector interface, I've just got a 0.1 inch uh, header here. You could use like a screw terminal or something like that. You could do a bit, a bit nicer than that if you want. But anyway, that'll be able to allow us to uh, reuse this as 
a sort of like a universal uh, counter. I mean, we could even sort of hack out the case and put the uh, case back on and stuff like that, and we can just insert our switch on the side. Beauty. And by the way, in this case with the uh, carbon covering the vias, that's going to be down the via holes as well. So I wouldn't go uh, sticking your wires down there and soldering them into the vias. I would have scraped off. If we didn't have those pads there, it would have just gently scraped off the top of the vias, being careful not to nick the wire in there and just lay the wire uh, flat on top. All right, let's give this a bow. We've got it hooked up with our connector on the side. Very nice. Look at that. So we'll just go one plus plus. And, of course, you might have to subtract one from the final result, but hey, no big deal. Oh, that's a real Bobby Dazzler. Fantastic. So, I hope you like that, how to hack a calculator into a simple counter. And, yes, it is just a switch input to this thing, so you can't use, like, a digital input or anything like that. It has to be just an open contact uh, switch. And if you had some sort of other input that you wanted to uh, drive, a noisy input you might want to clean up first, then you can just um, do the output using... You can short it out using a uh, transistor or a uh, relay or some any sort of other system that gives you sort of like more or less a contact uh, type output because remember this is a matrix uh, keypad it's not like just uh, individual keys with pull up resistors or anything like that they're not digital inputs so there you go hope you enjoyed that if you did please give it a big thumbs up because that really helps a lot these days catch you next time